Hey guys, what is up? Welcome to my channel. For today's video, we have one of my all-time favorite brands that I'm going to review. My Natasha Denona Smoke and Vision collection items that just came in. So if you want to see my thoughts, then just keep watching. Hi guys, if you're new here, my name is Morgan. I'm a product knowledge enthusiast. I just love knowing anything and everything about all the new makeup on the market and sharing my thoughts with you guys. So Natasha Denona's newest collection has arrived. Pretty much available right now everywhere that Natasha Denona can be found. The Natasha Denona website, Beautylish, Sephora. I think I saw a lot of other retailers that you can shop from internationally as well, but those are the main ones that I shop from. I ordered these from the Natasha Denona website. There's something easy about a nice pre-order. The shipping's really great. I did pay for expedited shipping. Don't recommend that just because I have a channel is the reason that I pay that much for shipping. Now in the collection it looks like the eyeliner is a part of it. It is the Macrobate liquid liner. This launched previously a couple weeks ago but it is considered a part of this collection. Very weird that it's separate, but okay. In the collection, there are a lot of eyeliners, a liquid liner, three pencil liners, and three different colored gel liners. There also looks to be a brush, which I do not have, and the eyeshadow palette, of course. You can purchase the entire collection from the Natasha Denona website for $160. It looks like the full value is $213. I didn't bother buying the whole collection, but I I do have a piece of each formula to be able to experiment with today. Before we get into the individual items, let me show you what I chose. So of course I got the mini Xenon palette that we are going to be playing with. I picked up one of the Macrotech eye crayons. So there were three shades. It looks like there's a brown shade, a burgundy shade, and a black shade. I love a good brown liner lately, so I only picked up the brown. I'm not gonna lie, I don't think I'm going to review this too much today. It doesn't go with this right now with the look that I'm envisioning, but I will keep you guys updated on that. And then I also picked up one of the three cream eyeliners. These are called the Long Wearing Full Coverage Cream Eyeliners. There's a nude color, a brown color, and a black I picked up the black. So we are going to be covering all of those items today. I will have timestamps for when I cover each product, but we are going to start off with the eyeshadow palette. We are up close and personal to really take a look at the mini Xenon palette. Now, if you are interested in comparisons of this, it will be in the timestamps. I'm gonna save that for the end. We really just wanna dive into this palette here. So let's talk about the packaging really quickly. It's going to come in a black box with the shade similar to all of the other mini palettes that came out. And on the back, it's gonna have the ingredients, the shade names, the formulas, and you can see it is made in Italy and has a 24 month shelf life. The packaging of the palette itself is also the same as all of the other mini palettes. It has the clear top, which I really like that you can see the colors, the black background, and then you have your five shades. I really like this packaging. I think it's nice and sturdy. It's nothing too fancy. This is $25, which is a great deal if you wanna try the Natasha Denona formula. The price per gram on this isn't the best. However, it is not going to hurt your wallet to pick up. And for me, I like small makeup. I have such a large collection, so I personally do not mind that. Now, one thing that I noticed was very interesting is on the back of the box and on on the back of the products when it labels the formulations here. The blackest black it says is a matte and it says gloom, mist, and puff are all CP, which normally stands for cream to powder. However, on the website, it does say that this formulation is creamy mattes and it even goes as far as when you go to how to use it describes all of the formulas besides the chromatic shade in the middle as cm which is a creamy matte so i think there was a typo on the back because these definitely do not look or feel like the cream to powder formula at all they are like the creamy matte formulas so just keep in mind that that must have been a typo from what i'm assuming the shade in the center chromatic is m which stands for metallic let's take a quick look at the swatches here I'm 
I'm not gonna lie, the top two deepest shades did not swatch nice at all. They felt very creamy, but very, very patchy is how they swatched. Now, my suggestion with these types of shades is typically they are pretty hard to work with. They have such a deep opacity to them. They can be hard to blend. My biggest tip for you is to work nice and slow, little by little. If you put down too much color from the start, you might run into trouble. So use a light hand, don't be too heavy handed with these types of shades. Nonetheless, it is Natasha Denona, so it should work for us impeccably no matter what way we are going to use them. Taking a deeper dive into the colors, there is one repeat shade, and that is the shade Chromatic, which is arguably the best shade in this palette as far as what stands out, what catches your eye. And that shade is actually in the 28 blue and purple palette. So what I would say is if this palette caught your eye for that chromatic shade and you have the 28 blue purple palette, then you you could pass. It's a different color story here uh, because these four shades on the outside, let's be real, they aren't the most unique. However, this palette is supposed to bring you Natasha Denona's signature smoky eye look with ease in a nice little compact palette. But I did want to show you that repeat shade. JK, I totally lied. There is another repeat shade, but it's a black. So this is called the Blackest Black. And if you watched yesterday's video, which was a Natasha Denona haul, I actually did did get the blackest black matte individual shadow and I can tell you right now they are not the same. First going back to chromatic, the top shade here is the new chromatic. The bottom shade here is the chromatic in my 28 pan. There's a couple year age difference so the one in the xenon definitely feels fresher, a little bit creamier whereas the one in my older palette maybe not as creamy but that definitely has to do with age. They look the same. <laughs> I did want to mention I told you you. This black does not swatch very nice. So I'm gonna do two twirls. Okay, look at that. Not very nice. Here's my thing with blacks though. I don't really like to go by how they swatch because a lot of times if you find a black is too perfectly opaque, it actually can be a lot harder to control. A lot of times we're not really putting a thick layer of black on the eyelid. We're not looking for that opacity. We're looking for smokiness. So I don't knock a black that doesn't swatch good because sometimes that just means it's gonna blend better and be a little bit easier to use. But I did wanna show you how it differs from the individual black is black. Two swirls, completely different. <laughs> you can see which one is the individual. I even did a second swatch and you can see it kind of peeling up. It is not swatching good. They are not the same formula. So just keep that in mind, the individual black, it feels better. I'm still pretty new to this, so I can't compare more, but yeah, got that out of the way. <laughs> I'm covered in swatches. Let's get to actual application. On my eye right now, I'm using the P. Louise base in the shade Rumor 02. I normally like to do face makeup, but we're not doing that because these shades are risky to do face makeup first. I have given the base some time to dry, so it shouldn't be too sticky. We're gonna start off with Puff which is that creamy matte. You can see we did get some fallout here. This is a Tom Ford number 11 brush. You can see this does have some pigment, so you can definitely use this all over the lid, depending on what kind of look you want to get. But I love this. I mean, this was definitely a needed shade in this type of palette, and it works great just to highlight that brow. If you're looking for a look that's going to blend very easily, you don't need to build too much opacity up. I would recommend lightly running it all over the lid. That probably will help those deeper shades blend a little bit easier. Next Next, we are going into Mist. Mist is just described as a light gray. And by the way, that puff shade was described as an off-white. So it's not a pure white, but this light gray shade is, again, a really great base to really work these shadows out. I like how this is a monochromatic palette. All of these are going to work well together to create a cohesive, well-blended look. This color story is not going to be for everybody. I mean, these are pretty intimidating colors. That don't really get worn too often, so I can see a lot of you passing on this. I personally wasn't jumping for joy when this palette first launched because it has been done before, but I think it's nice that Natasha Denona did come up with this color story for her line because it is essential colors for a good, cool-toned, classic smoky eye. Next up, we are going to head into Gloom. This is a medium dark gray. 
I'm using a Luxie Tapered Blending. This is a 229 is the number. And I initially was worried based on swatching for this, but you can see I'm not having any blending issues. It's working smoothly, not looking patchy. I think a lot of this though has to do with my patience as well when it comes to blending. Layering from light all the way to dark is going to help your experience. Powder on powder is going to help the shades blend in this case. And Natasha Denona's shades and formulas are so good that they can handle that layering and really work off of each other. Working out beautifully, I'm going back in with my Olimar Cosmetics blending brush, hazing these edges. Okay, you guys ready for the moment of truth? We're going into blackest black. This Olimar Cosmetics detailed diffuser brush is the best for detail work. Couple taps in, I'm going to just circle this around. Please keep in mind that I'm not using this all over the lid. I think that has a different story to tell about this black. But as far as just working and blending it into other shades and adding a smoky effect, you can see it's working beautifully. I mean, I have nothing bad to say about how these shades are blending. The only problem I could potentially see you running into is if you put this black down all over the lid. I think that might translate more like this as opposed to the blend that we're getting here. Okay, I'm gonna take my very first blending brush, get a little bit of the light gray shade, work the edges out. Some W21 brush. Going into chromatic. I just wanted to show you how it applies with a brush. I do prefer fingers. Natasha herself does recommend fingers as well. But you can totally pick up a lot of the beauty. And this is definitely the best shade in the palette. I mean, this is what's gonna make the entire palette, the entire look. It's beautiful, it's glittery. This is a classic Natasha formulation. Absolutely beautiful. And the glitters are gonna get everywhere if you choose to go in with a blending brush after this, but it's worth it. All right, I'm going to do the rest of my face and then we'll be back to finish the lower lash line. Okay, that was fast. Face makeup is done. What I did notice from Fallout is there wasn't much. Now keep in mind, I was always tapping off my brush. I prefer to go in little, less is more. The only thing that really I felt like needed cleanup were the glitter particles and the glitter fallout. So I did wanna get that off the eye before I put my complexion products on, but pretty good with the fallout. I think it would be a different story if I went a little bit heavier with the deeper shades, but we're gonna move on to the lower lash line. This is gonna be super quick. So we're gonna take some of mist very quickly. I really just wanna focus this on the inner part of our lower lash line, just to keep things nice and bright. Well, as bright as it could be, I'm gonna use the same brush, which is a BK Beauty 207. We're gonna go into the medium gray here. Tap off your brush. Be careful. This is very pigmented. I'm just gonna place that outer two thirds of the lower lash line. Love this. I'm gonna take a blending brush and just kind of soften the edges. Taking my Olimar brush, we're going into a blackest black, which is not the blackest black, by the way. And I'm putting this in the outer third, of the lower lash line. Going very sparingly, not going too ham. Very pretty. I'm taking a rougher number three brush and we're going into chromatic. And I'm just gonna pop this right in the center. just like a dot basically to add some attention to the eye. And I mean, here is the final look. I really like it. I had a very good experience applying these. I think everything blended great. My biggest tip for this would be slow and steady wins the race. Tap off your brush, be very careful, be intentional with with your placement, really work on the gradient that Natasha gave you. Start here, work your way up, and that's going to help with your blend. That's the nature of how you typically should work with these types of shades. I think they were really great. So far, so good. Let's get into the eyeliner. I'm gonna speed past the eye crayons really quickly because the brown is not gonna do any favors to this look. I love brown pencils though, so don't look past them. So these are called the Microtech Eye Crayons. They are $24. Like I said, there are three shades. There is a burgundy, a black, and the brown shade that I picked up. Taking a look at the brown box that it comes in, which it will match whatever color you ended up getting. This has an 18 month shelf life and is made in Italy. Based on my swatch on my hand, very creamy, very pigmented, super opaque. It's been on for about five or so minutes. Not moving at all. My hand looks a little bit gray and sickly because my makeup remover to get the swatches off dried out my hand. But look at that. Um, is it gross if I lick my finger? 
we're gonna do it anyways. Really not too much smudging. I'm pressing hard, so I feel like this is gonna have a good stay down time. But again, this is something I'm going to have to come back to just so that you can see the pencil. It will need to be sharpened and it doesn't have a sharpener at the end or anything, but I think I'm going to like this. So we will see. Actually, let me check the smudgeability before we move on. Let me see if you have some time to... Yes, so you do have some time to smudge if you need to. It's not the most smudgeable because there are some pencils that would really melt by doing this. So there isn't going to be a lot of smudging time. So that's what I can show you with that for now. But something that you might not know about me, I tend to enjoy and use liquid liners because they are so black. But actually my medium of choice for eyeliner, if I could only choose one style of eyeliner to use for the rest of my life, it actually would be the gel eyeliner. Eyeliners. I love them. MAC Black Track Fluid Line is still my baby. I That's my favorite gel liner. I use it in my makeup kit, but I don't know. I kind of want to see if I want to replace it with this. So I'm not going to dip in with this. I'm going to use a Q-tip to get the product out. These are called the Work and Set Long Wearing Full Coverage Cream Eyeliners. So there are three shades. There's a nude, which I almost picked up, but I was like, Morgan, what are you going to do with a nude shade? A brown and a black. I did just get the black. So these have an 18 month shelf life made in Italy as everything in this collection was made. The packaging itself, it has frosted glass. It feels nice and heavy. I like it. And these are $24 each. I forgot to mention the eye pencil is also going to be $24. So for an eye crayon, that's pretty expensive. Even for this, that's pretty <laughs> expensive. But let's see. My go-to gel liner brush is the MAC 210. As you can see, it is really, really thin. Let me grab a Q-tip really quickly. I'm always on the hunt for an amazing black gel liner so I'm gonna keep it sanitary just in case to put this in my makeup kit with a q-tip probably she used my spatula but I can't get it right now it's packed away so here's what it looks like right now let's see doesn't seem too soft I did have to dig in a little bit like I said my hands are gonna look kind of dry from <laughs> the makeup remover like that ew Remind me to wash my hands. So I'm just gonna take my brush, twisting it to keep my bristles nice and tight. Looks nice and black. So how I do my gel liner, I don't think I really talk about this. I use my pinky to stabilize and flick it out. It's not the smoothest gel liner. So it feels a little bit more dry, but that doesn't mean too much. Let me go back. It doesn't have as easy of a glide as some gel liners that I've used, but you really can't get a more precise line, in my opinion, than with a gel. Okay, I'm not gonna lie, she feels a little bit drier than I prefer with my gel liners because I like a nice glide. There was a little bit more drag than I would prefer. However, it's very, very black. My line looks super crisp, so it's not the perfect consistency. The fact that it's drier might actually mean that it's gonna last and not smudge so I'm gonna have to continue wearing this and update you guys I'm gonna quickly do this eye and then we will be back for comparisons and final thoughts as you can see we've taken a step out here is the final look I did use the black gel liner in my waterline I forgot to show that and on my lips I have all Natasha Denona on so I'm wearing the lip crayon in Dana this is my all-time favorite lipstick for smoky eyes or really cool toned looks the I need to nude lipstick in the shade Natasha. It's the best. And then I have the Lipophoria in nude on top. The perfect match for this eye look. Before we get into my final thoughts, I wanted to do some comparisons with the mini Xenon palette. And I took these suggestions from the live that I had the other day. So thank you to those of you who participated in that. That's why I'm featuring this. Okay, we're going to go in first with this one I didn't think was going to be super close, but I wanted to compare it with you. This is the the Theory Chroma palette from Viseart. It's the same color story. Obviously, it's that gray, smoky kind of palette here. The Viseart is a little bit more neutral. It has almost more brown to it, where I feel like the Natasha leans truly more cool tones. It doesn't have the chromatic shade at all, anything close. There are similarities 
that you can see, but you see how this one's more neutral. This one's almost a little bit more wearable than the Natasha Denona right here. So same idea, but I don't think they are dupes. Now, <laughs> listen, I like the Natasha Denona palette. However, if you're looking to save some coin, ColourPop has their Blow and Smoke palette, okay? This used to be called Smoke Show when I first purchased it. This I checked today is on sale for $10. So while the Natasha Denona I say is a good deal, this is more than half the price. Let me show you them side by side. You get nine colors with this and I'm gonna go on a limb to say these are absolutely dupes. So let me show you something wild, you guys. This, I'm gonna turn the light down so you can really see this. This is Natasha Denona. This is ColourPop. You can see what swatch is better. It's the ColourPop. The ColourPop looks more smooth. This black swatches terribly. It does not layer on well at all. I mean, with application, I didn't have a problem, but look at that. That was terrible. Look how smooth the ColourPop looks. Look how these two look different, but they are the exact same shades, you guys. Dupe for dupes. $10 for the ColourPop. The ColourPop swatch is better. It's a little bit smoother. I love this palette. I always thought it applied really easily as well. This is a bit more messy. The colors themselves aren't as hard pressed into the pan as Natasha Denona. You're going to get more fallout with this. It's a lot messier. I love Natasha, but <laughs> I'm leaning towards the ColourPop for you guys. I think I'd recommend that over this one. However, the chromatic shade definitely feels a little bit better. It has more dimension than the ColourPop, but does that justify the price difference for you? So I would say that the ColourPop probably blends a little bit easier and the price. <laughs> I just, I can't tell you to get the Natasha Denona when the ColourPop is at this price. So thank you to those of you who told me to compare those because wow. But let's get into my final thoughts on all of the products. Like I said, I really did like the mini Xenon palette. <laughs> Don't know if I'd recommend it to you now that the ColourPop literally dupe for dupe. They are the exact same. But I didn't have a problem with this. It worked well. If you want to support Natasha Denona, I gave you a lot of tips for application in the tutorial portion. I like it. I love the look. I think it's fun. Is it a must have for me? No, this is not a palette that I needed in my collection, nor is it a color story that I grab for too terribly often, but I like it. Eye crayon. I, I can't tell you too much about it now. It seems like it's going to stay a really long time. It seems really smooth, really creamy, but it sets down really, really fast. So this is something I'm going to have to keep you updated on. This guy as well, the gel liner. It's more dry than I prefer. I find that with my MAC fluid line, it just glides across the eyelid. This one does have a little bit of drag, so I don't know that this is one I want to put in my makeup kit because I love the drag on my clients. It just makes it a lot quicker for application. However, she's very black, very, very, very black. So if you're looking for a true matte, intensely deep gel eyeliner, this is great. So far, it's doing well on the waterline as well. If I notice anything weird with wear, I will put it either in the description box on here somewhere. You'll find it. Now, what I didn't talk about that is also in the collection is the Macro Blade Liquid Liner. I like how this wears. However, I find it to be a little bit too liquidy for me. I find that it seeps into the lines when I apply it to my <laughs> eyelid and just too much product comes out for me. I don't feel like I have the most control. However, it's very black and it wears very well. It's just application I'm not the biggest fan of. I'm giving this some time. I feel like it, the formula might thicken up the longer I have it. So I like it, but I really don't love it. It's not the perfect liquid eyeliner for me. I'd almost rather get the gel. For me, that's a little bit easier to apply. But there we have it. Those are my thoughts and review on the Natasha Denona Smoke. Is it? Now I can't remember. Smoke and Vision in... <laughs> What is this called? Yes, Smoke and Vision Collection. I hope it was helpful to you all. And I will see you in the next one. I can't wait to show my mom these swatches. I'm gonna do it right now. Bye. <laughs> Subscribe. Okay, I'm going to show my mom. I wanna get her reaction. One is Natasha Denona, one is ColourPop. Look at my hand. Oh my gosh, there. I, I would say that this is Natasha Denona. It's ColourPop. No way, this one is patchy. Yes. It applied fine, but but if you're just going for swatches right this don't is they a, look exactly the same colors they're exactly the same colors and this is swatching more smooth dense and smooth what about application the application was really good but the color pop application is really good too 
Oh dear. Yeah. Why was this on my footage?